I guess uh, just to start, I mean, did you imagine you came in knowing you were going to be on a minutes restriction and everything like that? I mean, just what was kind of the uh, just goal for what you were trying to get out of night? Just how did you feel out there, and you know, what was like just kind of try to start getting really fast? Yeah, just trying to do what I what we can to keep me healthy moving forward. Um, obviously, we know there's a I need to play a certain amount of games and. Um, you know, but at the same time, I need to be on the floor with my teammates, and that's what I want to do. I want to play. So, um, you know, there obviously was a setback the first time. So, I think as a franchise and organization, we're coming together and just came together, made a group plan on what's best for me. You know, to be able to be on the floor long term, trying to play in the, every game that I can if I'm if, it's, if I'm able to. So, uh, this was the plan coming in. Obviously, obviously, we struggled last year when I got hurt, and around the same time. So, um, I think we've just. Done a great job of, of, of playing together. We got a lot of hungry guys, young hungry dudes that are, have something to prove. Pascal coming helps, obviously, but a lot of different guys stepping into bigger roles and, and being prepared. And it's a next man up mentality, top top down. I mean, you see TJ's out, somebody else got to step up. When Miles is out, our bigs have been ready. We just got a lot of guys that have been ready, and we've preached our depth since uh, training camp. How do you think this team changed while you were gone? Obviously, you were there to see it and everything like that. I mean, just how do you think the dynamic changed with Siakam and not just what he did, but how? It moved everybody else around. Yeah, I think it's kind of, you know, baptism by fire. There's no better way to figure out how to play without me on the floor than me not being <laughs> available, right. you know. So I think guys have responded the right way. And I think it's understanding of what, what went on last year for us mm-hmm. as a group. And I think guys, you know, frustrated guys because we felt like we should have been a playoff team last year and uh, had a really bad month that kind of messed everything up. So um, I think that speaks to the maturity of our group. And just trying to keep going. We're, you know, got some new guys this year than we did last year, and um, that's part of the NBA. There's movement every year, and uh, you know it's our core guys have done a good job keeping us together. And you know we've had a lot of young guys, a lot of other guys step up. How much of a core guy has Aaron become? Especially twenty six and seven, and that's one just to grow from him. Yeah, he had twenty six and seven. Yeah, yeah more than rebounds. I think it's seven assists. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's been balling. I mean, I, I think that um, you know he has a chip on his shoulder from being traded and. All things that were said about him when he got traded, and that's what we love about him. And uh, to, to be able to sign him to a deal long term for him to be here is really exciting because he's an amazing player. And Aaron Neesmith is a player that every team on the NBA in the NBA wants. You want a guy like Aaron who will just do whatever he's asked, puts his head down, and works. And so I think that's what we love about him. And uh, there's definitely some extra juice for him when he plays Boston, and um, that that's cool to see. Just cool to see him ball. Thank you guys. Appreciate Thanks, Todd.